we are going over how to add a buyer. My name is Tom Shively and I'm the director of training here at BuySide. And I'm also joined by Todd Williams, our client services extraordinaire, who's going to be helping us out with the Q&A once we get to the very end. So a quick agenda for what we're going to be looking at today is how do you add a buyer? So we're going to add somebody in from scratch. So let's say you meet somebody at a barbecue, right? Or you meet somebody out on the street or it's a referral from a friend. They don't get imported directly into the system there just isn't that direct import because uh we don't have that it's not somebody that went to our agent website now if we do add buyers into our crm a lot of times those will get imported in but we're going to show you how to add in a buyer into the buy side system and i'll tell you why once we get there uh, we'll also show you how to edit a buyer so when those buyers do come in automatically somebody saves a search on our agent website we put them into our crm as a buyer uh, they get imported in automatically well how do we edit that and also why why would you change your buyers so there's a reason that you would want to do that and we'll show you those different steps of where those buyers come from why it's important that they have a really strong buyer profile and how those buyers that we've now updated float to the top of everybody else's list when we put in that buyer information because that is important now we are going to have a q a at the very end and you will notice that i have muted everybody so if you do have any questions go ahead and put them in that questions box that you see on the right hand side and we'll be get to those questions once we get to the very end all right uh, and before we jump in now we are going to jump right into the product today um, but I, we do want to remind you that we do have our buy side insiders Facebook group where we post tips and tricks best practices uh, and of course some testimonials so if you have if you want to see some success stories if you want to share those if you want to see how people are using this you can go inside uh see our buy side insiders group and get all of that great information where we're going to be posting that cool stuff and of course if you do have any questions about anything i've talked about today or if you have any issues when you uh start in buy side you can always email us at support at getbuyside.com and uh, we'll be able to answer any of those questions. You may even talk to Todd. So that's what we're going to get started with, and that's what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and actually just jump in. So from our dashboard, we know that we can see my buyers up here on top. So I've got my buyer up there. Now we're going to add one in. So it's a pretty simple process, but we're also going to take a look at my buyers. So across the top, this is where your tools are. So we can go to my buyers. Uh, and this is going to show you all of the buyers you have. So you'll be able to see a little bit more information right from there because the dashboard is going to show you some of the top buyers, but it's not going to show you everybody, right? I mean, if we had, let's say, 50 buyers, we don't want to make, we don't want to have all of those on one page, right? That would just dominate your your dashboard. So you can come into my buyers and see all of those at once, and you can also filter these down. So if you want to check your own buyers, uh, let's say you're searching for somebody in particular, or if you wanted to narrow this down, so you're looking for a buyer, you have a listing, you want to see what matches you've got. So so you can say a three plus bedrooms, uh, two plus bathrooms, whatever the price is, and then search. So you can search your own buyers. Uh, but let's actually go to add, and we're going to go to add a buyer. So we're going to select add buyer, and this brings us to our buyer profile. Now, this is where we can add in all of that stuff about our buyer. Now, remember, when we have listings that get imported in, uh, so we put those into our, uh, our MLS. So we're associated with one on the MLS. It goes into our CRM. It pipes into buy side automatically. You're going to see those flow over. You're not going to have to add those in. Now, there is a way for us to see coming soon listings and quiet listings, also known as pre-listings and non-MLS listings. Uh, and that we'll take a look at next week. So if you want to see how to do those, uh, sign up for our webinar that's going to happen next Thursday. Now, that is something that we can do now and I know a lot of people are concerned about this new rule that's going around that says we can't add coming soon listings uh, into the system uh, without it going live on the MLS within 24 hours now that doesn't actually apply to these because this is an internal system and only the people that are going to see this are other agents within your brokerage but we'll address that next week uh, so we've added our buyer here and what's great about this is if you have an admin if you have an office admin, they can actually add buyers into your system for, uh, for you on behalf. So if you wanted somebody who said, hey, I've got this buyer, can you go ahead and add them in for me? They can actually do that from here just to show you what that looks like. 
So now where uh where let's add some things in about this buyer. So the school district. So this say Livermore Valley Joint. I'll actually add in another one. Uh there we go. <laughs> uh okay, looks like I already have that one. So let's say Amador. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got a couple of school districts in there. We'll say Livermore in here, and that's in California. I have a listing in there that we can see. So we'll add a couple of zip codes. So where is that area? We can actually be specific about where that person is looking for listings. Now we can add in features. So what bedrooms are they looking for? Uh, if it was me, I'd say at least three bedrooms. Uh, let's say two bathrooms, minimum square footage. You know, that's actually not too important. I want to see those any and all listings. So we don't want to rule things out uh, if it's not that important. So we'll go ahead and leave that blank. Uh, garage, yes. Two-car garage, that's important. Uh, and then the desired lot size. So do they need a lot of land? We can actually put that in there. So if they've got, let's say, a pack of dogs, we'll make sure that they have enough land uh, for them to be able to run around on. So we can add that in there. What is the property type? So let's say single family detached. Uh, or any of these. So I actually like the idea of a townhouse. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, so we can add in land, farm, and tenant uh, tenancy in common. Now, one co question that we often get is, does this apply to condos? Yes, you can add in condos. You can do land if somebody is looking for just something you know, without a listing, they want to build their own house on it. We can look for land. So whatever type of buyer or uh, listing you have, you can add that into the system. And what is the property condition? Is it turnkey? Of course, we want to see turnkeys, but let's also see fixer upper. You know what? Let's go to TLC. So there we go. Uh, and what is the house style? Now, I can add that in. You know what? If it was me, I actually wouldn't mind. So let's just leave that blank. And you will notice that a few of these do have a, they're bold and they do have a star after them. So there we go. Those ones are the mandatory fields. So you'll see a lot of these don't have that, but bedrooms, bathrooms, property type, those are mandatory. So we have to add those in there. And public comments. So we can add the, these in. So somebody, we can put this in here so that if somebody has a listing, we can see if this person does apply. So a lot of these fields might match up, but let's add these public comments in here. So looking for a listing. I'm just gonna add in a short little uh, <laughs> comments, but you can add exactly what they're looking for, who they are, what what is something specific. And I did actually click that really fast, but we can show musts, likes, and dislikes. That means we have a list of things in here that may be a mandatory thing for them. So we can put in a basement. I actually like the idea of a basement, but I don't need one. So swimming pool, I live in California. Of course I need a swimming pool, uh, fireplace, I like that idea. Let's see. Master on the main. No, I like my master on the second floor. So I can dislike that. So we can make sure that all of these things apply. So if somebody wants to get really specific with the properties they're looking at, we can get really specific with their buyer profile so that when we match them with a listing, when we're taking them to these other listings uh, to see that match us up in the system here, you'll notice that it will be a very specific and tailored search. So we can find exactly what they're looking for. Okay, so underneath that is your financials. So qualification status, are they pre-qualified? Uh, other lenders, so let's say Tom's lender. There we go, so I can put in uh, the pre-qualified buy, or if they're cash, it'll get rid of that field. So let's say cash, and what is the price? So this is important, right? Wanna make sure they can afford it. So let's say 199, uh, and we'll say 999, there we go. Okay, available down payment, we can put that in there as well. And then the purchase by date. So when are they looking for this listing? When can they actually have that in here? So we're gonna go purchase by, and we'll say the end of June, where they're a serious buyer, they wanna buy this thing in the next couple of months. So there we go. And the type of buyer, and that's again, that's important information when somebody is looking for somebody that uh, who's going to buy this house. Is it, do we want a first time buyer? I'm actually gonna click investor as well because I like to look for investors. So there we go. So I've got uh, the types of buyers that I have in there and then the method of payment. So we have our loans and we can click a few of those. There we go. So underneath that is the buyer details. And now this is important. And, and that's that when you add this information into the system, 
all of this, the contact information, this info is only going to be seen by you. So with anybody else, if they have a listing and they're looking for buyer matches, they're not gonna see the name. They're not gonna see the contact information. All they're going to see is a buyer ID number. And we'll take a look at that in a second. But let's say I do put this person's name and uh, contact information. You don't have to worry that anyone else is going to see this. Nobody else can see your account but you. So let's say this is Mr. Tommy Buyer. There we go. Uh, and we can put their contact information here and then their phone number. So we can show contact details if you wanted to put some more information in there. What is their address, their secondary phone? And again, this is just helping fill out their buyer profile or we can hide that. So I now have their name and their contact info so that I can contact them directly from buy side. So now I'm gonna select add buyer and that's it. Now my buyer is done. So we went through and we added our buyer profile. So we went through all of those different fields to get our buyer exactly what they're looking for. So now we notice that this has a four star buyer and a good way to think about your stars for buyers is think about it like a hotel, right? You wanna look for a four, horse, four star hotel because two star hotels have bed bugs and we don't like bed bug buyers. So we wanna make sure that when we fill out these buyer profiles that they do have those four stars because when someone has a listing, the four star buyers are the ones that are going to be on the top of the list, the most qualified people. So when they're looking at those buyers, it's better for us as the person representing the buyer to make sure this profile looks as strong as possible. Now, what do those stars represent? Well, let's take a look. Over on the right-hand side, we can see buyer strength. So we can see how strong this buyer is by these four things here. Now you will see when things do import automatically, they may only be two stars and it's because these middle two won't be there. Or a one star buyer, which uh, if it gets sent into the system under your buy side, they're going to be represented by an agent. So it may be a one star buyer. But what these represent is, do they have a purchase by date, right? We want to make sure that they are ready to buy. Are they ready to buy? Yes, of course. Uh, Pre-qualified, can they afford it? We wanna make sure that they can pay for this listing and are they represented by an agent? Those are the four things that show us that this is a serious and strong buyer. So now when we're looking in the system, if I have a listing, I wanna take a look at those four-star buyers first because they have all of these qualifications already. Somebody added it in, they added the buyer, they added the in uh, the strength of this buyer. So I know that this person uh, is a serious buyer. So if I'm pairing them up with my listing, I wanna contact that person. That way I can get this listing closed as soon as possible. But now that I've filled out my buyer profile, we got really specific with what they want. Well, guess what? Down here on the left-hand side, these are listings that match this person's profile. So the listing that they took a look at that we can see under here are those listings. So now I can see I've got uh, my listing ID. So I can even click on that and see the listing. How many buyers are there? How can I contact that buyer agent? That'll be over here. So if I have a buyer, I click on that listing, I can contact that agent right from here. So now I know, hey, you've got a listing, I've got the buyer, let's go ahead and pair these people up and I can actually see any other buyers. So how much interest is there in this listing? Now we can see that I've got a few. But what's great about this listing is you'll actually see a few of these in here and these are coming soon listings. So guess what? These are listings that haven't hit the MLS yet. These are listings that are in our internal system. It's represented by an agent at our brokerage, but it hasn't hit the MLS yet. So we can get our buyers in early when we see those coming soon listings. Or if you see one that's yellow, that will be your quiet listings or exclusive listings or non-MLS, whatever you wanna call that. It just means that it's not going to be on the MLS or pocket listings. Uh, you can see those here um, as well. So what is the status of this? So if this was black, you'd see the MLS number here. That means that it's on the MLS. This coming soon listing means that it hasn't hit there yet. So I'm getting my buyer in early. I can get them to see that listing that much earlier. So now I might even reach out to that agent. We can get a, an offer started and we can close it maybe even before it hits the MLS. So even though the plan was to see that interest on the MLS, they're looking to move it quickly. So now we got in that much earlier. So you can see those coming soon listings inside of buy side here. Okay, so next is we're gonna take a look at sharing your buyer. So we can see share on social media up here. Now, what does that mean? We're actually gonna click public profile on the 
top. So let's select that. And this is going to show you a public profile for your buyer. And again, it shows you the buyer ID. So there we go. We can see that buyer ID, the stars up there, and it'll show them all this great information. So they're looking in Livermore. They're looking for this price range, bedrooms, bathrooms, all that great stuff. And who do we contact? Not the person. We don't give them that name, but contact Joe. Joe Broker in here. So that's me. And I give them this really easy form. So now I can say my first name and it'll pre-populate that contact info if they're using a browser that has that. Uh, and then are they a seller? I'm a buyer. So we can actually see, now we'll do seller. So there we go. So, or are you an agent? I'm a broker or an agent. And I see that you have uh, a buyer. I've got a listing. Let's pair these people up. So now we've seen this public profile and all of, this all of these details down here. So the financials, the desired features and all that. But guess what? Contact Joe if you want to see this full profile. So we know we put a lot of this stuff in here. But... We want to make sure that they contact you for this listing. So this is a way for you to share these. And let's go back over here. Uh, and we see we've got our social media icon. So we took a look at that before and how to share our HVS, our home uh, valuation site on social media. Um, but this is a way for you to share buyer profiles. So if we click on Facebook, that's one of the most common. You can really share it on any social media that is out there. But you can see I can share to uh, my news feed. So if you use your personal Facebook as your business, uh, you know, a lot of people do that where they're they're putting their listings or, you know, hey, use me as an agent or putting in a um, value, a marketing presentation out there. That's a good way to do this. Well, you can also put your buyers out here. So guess what? Thinking of selling, I have buyers. There we go. So they can click on this really cool image here. And I can see, see the buyers or whatever your message is going to be. But not only that, I can share this to other places. So I can share it in my newsfeed if I use that. Or let's say I'm in a group. So my uh, agents, uh, excuse me, my brokerage has a group. So if I were in BuySide Realty, so I can actually post this to the BuySide Realty group to say, hey, I know all of you are using BuySide, but if you have a listing, I've got this buyer, check it out, and we can pair them up. And somebody can uh, message you directly in side Facebook. So we can use that to start to generate some interest for our listings and our buyers. Or you can share this pay on a page that you manage. So if you have a Facebook uh, business page, there we go, uh, you can actually put that in here as well. So the uh, Tom Shively, there we go, Facebook business page. We're posting as this person. I added in my uh, my tag in here, excuse me, my comment, uh, and now I can send it. So now people can see my buyers on any one of those places. So if I wanted to post this to a group, my Facebook business page or my newsfeed, I could do that. And again, it works for really any social media. You can see I've got Gmail, print, LinkedIn, Twitter, 181 of them in here. So a lot of great places that you can put that. Okay, so that is putting in a buyer from scratch and why we would wanna do that. So why you would want to add a person in there because it does increase that buyer strength. Now, let's say we have somebody that was imported in and it was only two stars. We can actually see that here up on top. Well, this is four, but if let's say, let's assume it did take, it was a two star person they got imported. Now, why would I wanna go in and change that information? Well, we briefly touched on it a bit. So let's go ahead and select that person and it'll show me the buyer profile. Now, if this is somebody that was saving searches and favoriting listings on my website, that's only going to be a small snapshot of what the buyer is actually looking for. But let's say Jane Buyer is somebody that I know. I know they're looking for listings. They're going to my website and searching for them. I've coached them to do that. So now what I can do is go to edit profile and it's going to bring up that same page. So now what I can do is fill out the rest of this information. It's going to have some of it. So where are these areas? Where are the cities and zip codes? But I can come out and just flesh this out a bit, get it a little bit more information. So do I need to add in the bedrooms? Do I need to add in more bathrooms? What is the property type? We can get specific with their musts, likes, and dislikes uh, and just really flesh this profile out so that now they can continue to do those things on my website, but I'm also going to make this buyer that much stronger. So when somebody has a listing, they'll know to contact me because I made this person from a one-star buyer to a four just by coming in and updating a little bit of information. So if you're working with buyers, if you have those people that are serious about buying, they're looking, well, let's come in here 
see their account, see their buyer profile and fill out just a little bit more information that didn't import in because again, it may not be that complete buyer profile. So then we can add that in. And now when people have listings, this is the buyer that's gonna float to the top of that list. So when we come in here and we go to our uh, agent view and they have that listing, what it's gonna show me here is the potential matches. So if I click on this, it's gonna put those four star buyers on top. and it's, you're gonna see the the rest of those. So all those other buyers that got imported, well, they'll be on this list, of course they will, uh, but they're gonna be a little bit further down. So if we wanna make sure that our people are looked at first, come in here and do this. So then it's a really simple way of garnering that in, uh, information and that attention to your buyers. Okay, so today we took a look at how to add a buyer, how to share that buyer on social media, and how to edit buyers that were imported in to increase the strength of their buyer profile. And that's why you would want to do this. Okay, so I see that we have a couple questions already. Uh, and really, again, you can ask questions about anything that we've covered in the last four weeks. So if you do have any questions, uh, go ahead and type them into that questions box now, and we'd be happy to answer those. Todd, I do have a first question here, which is, um, okay, so when these buyers get imported, where are they coming from? from my brokerage? Uh, it would, it, uh, first of all, hello everyone and great job, Tom. <laughs> but those <laughs> Thanks, buyers are coming from your brokerage's CRMs, um, that would uh, vary by brokerage. Yeah, very good. So they do come in from a lot of different places. It really depends on the brokerage. If you're somebody that uses, let's say, uh, you know, KV Core or Moxie or any of that, we might get a feed from there, but there's a lot of different places that we get that feed from. So it does vary by brokerage, but just know that it is tailored to your brokerage. So whatever you use, that's what's gonna import those people over. So it's a really simple process. So you may come in here and see that you have a ton of buyers in here and recognize a lot of these names. So a good way to start may not just be to add buyers by, from scratch, but to come in and update a few of those people that you know and have been working with. Okay, so did we say that we have something on Facebook they can fill out that will lead to our buy side? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that is your marketing suite up here. So that's something we talked about, I think three weeks ago, but if you go to your home valuation site, this is a way for them to fill out uh, or see what their home is worth. So we can just click on this link here and it's gonna to go to their home valuation site. So you can type in an address and they'll get a full details page of what their home is worth, what the market is doing, how many potential buyers our brokerage has. So if there are buyers that pair up with this person, they'll be able to see those buyer IDs and say, hey, we've got 15 people that are looking to buy your, your exact listing right now or somebody that matches the profile really. But they'll be able to see that. And the point is that you're now showing them that there are that many people that are looking that could look at their listing right away. So we can post this on social. So yeah, you can come down here, share on social media. And again, it's that same icon. So you can click on Facebook, Gmail, we could do LinkedIn, that'll take you to another page, Twitter, all that great stuff. So you can do that. And that's a really easy way to generate those seller leads, right? Somebody that's gonna come in here, put their address in and they have a way to contact you directly from that page. They have a way to uh, see what their home is worth, claim their listing uh, and even get monthly reports. So get this page sent to them every single month and then you'll be able to see that under your lead. So now I can see the people's names if they ask me for an inquiry, uh, what the address is and then the owner's name. So even if they aren't filling out, they don't have a name provided, I still have the owner's name and the address. So maybe I send them mailers. So it's a great way to get really warm seller leads. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a webinar that we already took a look at. And you know what? Let's actually take a look at this. So we have a buy side training YouTube page. Uh, and if you wanted to come in here and go to my channel, so there we go. So you can actually see we've got a, t a couple of videos in here. We're uploading new ones every single week. So some are the webinars that we've done in the past and some are tips and tricks. A few of these are only a minute, minute and a half long. Uh, and it's just really quick how to post your home valuation site on social media. Uh, and we also have the webinar that was who's gonna buy your home or the home valuation site. So a lot of great resources that you have available to you, uh, but that's where you would find our YouTube page. Let's see. Um, can we view other webinars online? I just answered that. That's a great question. Yes, you can. You can view all these weekly webinars if you go to Buy Side Training uh, on YouTube and you'll be able to find those. Great question. 
Uh, do we need to add our URL on Facebook for that marketing page? Uh, well, certainly advertising on social media is one of the best places to reach your audience, uh, especially if you are uh, kind of been cultivating a Facebook business page. Uh, as, as you can see, Tom showing how easy it is to share. Um, we also have Tom actually pertaining to that. This is just an update that we have right below that window underneath the social share. I want to point out to everybody. Yeah, you could probably just exit out. Right below that, we inserted a tip. And this is an article from our help center that has calls to actions in it at the top. I think it's about top 20 maybe calls to actions that our clients find useful. This is great for um, a lot of people that I talk to even print this out and will put the, keep this next to their laptop on their desk. Um, it's just a great tool to have around for there's there's email call to actions. It's just any one of those little one-liners to get somebody to click on the link and fill out their address so you get that lead. I love it. And to answer that question, no, you don't need to post the URL on social. You can actually just come in here and click on it and it's going to generate a post for you that already includes the URL. So if I came in here, you'll see that it's got this link. So they, your clients will be able to just click on that picture and get to your page. So you don't have to copy the URL and paste it into Facebook. You can just come in here, click on the Facebook link uh, and then say, see what your home is worth. There we go, and then post that. And so the link is already in here. You can actually see, bam, it's right there. It's actually gonna be tailored to you as well. So you can see it'll have your name in it. Of course, this is gonna to go to your page, whichever one you wanted. So let's say I wanted to share it to my Facebook business page. There we go. Uh, so that way I can share that. But you don't actually have to uh, copy the link and paste it into Facebook. This will generate the post for you because if you did do that, which you can if that's what you want to do and then tailor your own, uh, Hit, uh, post, excuse me. But if you pasted the link, it'll have this same exact photo uh, and link here. It'll just also have the link that you pasted. So it'll show both. But if you wanted to do that, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. Very good question. How can you see the name of the buyer once, is it, once it is imported from KV Core? Uh, once it is imported, you'll just go to, as Tom's showing us here, uh, we have the My Buyers straight from the dashboard. Um, there's also the My Buyers tab up on top where you'll see the full list. Um, you'll see the, the matches, whether it's MLS or non-MLS. And you'll also see the lead source there as well. Those were added directly. You would see added as a saved search, I believe it would be. Beautiful. I love it. Okay, yeah, that's how you would see your buyers. They are in here, so you can see the names, the buyer ID, and what they are looking for. So we can even come in and update that if we wanted to. Um, all right, those are all the questions I see. Thank you all for being here. We have another one of these webinars scheduled for next week. I think we're going to schedule another two or three because the quarantine is probably going to last a couple more weeks. So we're going to add those in. So if you wanted to join in, you can also uh, go ahead and take a look at those future webinars. Thank you all for being here, and we will see you next week.